All right, you guys, I'm recording this. Thanks so much for being on. And I, I always record these calls. I always try to record these calls so that you can watch them at a later date or if you can't be on live. Um, sometimes it doesn't work because of technology, so it's always best to be on live if you can, but um, I always try to record them. So thanks for being on tonight. I am um, Katie Harlan. I'm the founder of Team Dream Builders, and today is April 7th. 2016. So tonight we're going to talk about social media and recently it was Super Saturday and I um, did a little presentation for our team and, a, and another team that kind of combined um, about social media and just kind of how to go about posting on social media for um, the best impact. So that's what we're going to talk about today but before I jump into that I just have a few announcements. So if you guys have some paper or computer or whatever, um, it, it's a good idea to take notes. The first thing is, I just wanted to let you know, sorry, I dropped my pen, that I lately, I have gotten into a bad habit at kind of being accessible all the time. Um, I'm always answering messages right away and it's just a bad habit. I don't, want to do that I just think oh I'll just I can answer this really fast so I will and then I get caught up in message after message so I just wanted to let you know that I'm I'm trying to kind of pull back a little bit so that I'm only working certain hours of the day so that it doesn't kind of creep into my life this really is a part-time business so if I'm answering messages all day long then it doesn't feel part-time and I I don't think that's what we're going for so if you don't hear from me right away coming up. Um, I haven't dropped off the face of the planet. I'm just trying to kind of streamline my office hours. It is a struggle for me because I love working and I love this business and I quite often would rather just be talking to you guys all day and doing this. Um, it's it's so fun for me, but I, I need to kind of have a better life balance. So anyway, I just wanted you to know if you don't hear from me right away, I'm still there. I will respond to you as soon as I can. I'm just kind of trying to put my office hours in um, a little box in my life. So I hope that makes sense for you. Um, okay, another thing coming up is, and I know I've talked about it a lot, but that's because it's really important. It's the corporate event on April 20th. It's a Wednesday night from 7 to 10 p.m. I don't know that it will go that late, but that's as late as we have the space reserved. Um, Kim Carver from Corporate is flying out from Utah or LA, I forget which office he's in, and he's going to do a training about the three or four now vital behaviors. This will be really great. It's, it's always good to be in front of corporate, for them to see us, uh, for us to get to know them. It will be some great training, and then we're going to have some local leaders presenting some different training topics too. So I, I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it, live events are really where the magic happens. It's always something, a live event that makes the coach go, okay, I, I get it. Like, aha, I, I'm feeling it. I Either they're inspired or they get a little, you know, piece of information that they hadn't heard that way before. It's the difference between listening to a your favorite band on a CD versus going to their concert. There's just a magic in being there live. So I really encourage you to get to a live event. And this one's coming to Champagne. It's a um, the Hyatt or the Hilton. Uh, if you don't have the event link in your Facebook, let me know and I'll send you the invite. Um, but it, it should be a really good event. Also, our team, our local team, if you're local, we're going to meet for drinks at 530. I think we're going to try to still. Um, the event starts, did I say it started at 7? Seven? 7, yeah. So anyway, we're going to meet at 530 for anybody who can come and grab drinks and just hang out. If you can't, that's okay. But it would just be a fun time to kind of get together and, and relax. It'd be fun going to the event a little more relaxed too, I thought. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know about that. And then one more thing, I'm going to set this up tomorrow. It's the Backstage Pass to Coaching. It is happening next Wednesday, the 13th, and it will start at 8.15. So it's an event on Facebook. It's created as an event. Um, it's been wildly successful. What happens is your network sees all of the posts. Anytime you post in that group, anybody you're friends with will see that post. So it gets other people kind of interested in what's happening. And um, there's a lot of energy within the group. So here's how I invite. 
hey, have you ever thought about coaching? If you're interested, next week my team's hosting a casual Facebook event where we're gonna talk about the FAQs of coaching. You can just log in from your computer and there are some great prizes along the way, so I'd love to have you there. Would you like the invite? Something super casual. I would aim to get to invite 10 people. If you invite 10 people, you'll likely get uh, four or five, and of those four or five, you might have one or two join our team. So it's a numbers game. The more people you invite, the more people you might have join. But it's a really, it's a really fun event, and um, Team Dream Builders is hosting that for the larger team, Transformers, next Wednesday. Okay, I had one more thing to say, and it just slipped my mind, so I might have to come back to it. Oh, I remember. Okay, in two weeks, our team call on the 21st, we have guest speakers. Katie and Chad Grau are coaches from the Springfield, Illinois area, and they're husband and wife coaches. They both have quit their jobs, and they do Beachbody full-time. So I'm having them speak about two things. One, how they're running this business together, and two, how Chad has done it as a male, from a male perspective. I know we've got a lot we're getting more guys on our team, and um, I've had a lot of questions lately about how to run this business as a male, and clearly I am not the right person to ask for that, so I reached out to Chad, and he has done a really great job um, branding himself and, and doing it in a really accessible way, um, so I invited them to talk. So anyway, mark your calendars on the 21st for that call. It should be a good one. Okay, you guys, let's get right into the training. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see it? Thumbs up? Yeah, okay, thank you. Let's make it bigger. Okay, you can still see it? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so my presentation on Saturday was the art of social media, and just to give you a little background, I started as a coach, I've been a coach for three years, and when I started, um, I started at ground zero with, with social media. I didn't, I, I didn't use Facebook for anything other than random occasional posts, and there was no purpose behind it. I, I really was just kind of playing around with it. It was at the time when it said, your first and last name, and then you just entered the rest. So I'd be like, Katie Harlan is cooking dinner. I mean, it was so lame and boring. That's all I used it for. So when I started, um, when I started as a coach, my coach, Lindy, told me, you know, Katie, you can really grow your reach by um, getting better at social media. And to do that, you just need to be more present. So start by posting three to five times a day about anything and just kind of sprinkling in health and fitness posts there. So don't just come across and be like, I'm a health and fitness coach, Blah! because that's scary and creepy and nobody wants to feel like they're being sold to. So I, I listened and it was uncomfortable for me. I remember feeling, you know, it's, it's scary to put yourself out there, especially if you haven't been doing that. But I did. I started with like one post a day and then I worked up to two and then I got to where I could easily post three times a day at least, sometimes, you know, many times more. And I, I just shared my life. I shared what I was thinking, what I was doing, um, funny things during my day, questions for people. And then I would sprinkle in health and fitness. You know, here's a tip that works for me. Here's a great recipe. Have you guys ever tried this workout move, etc. And what happened is that simple thing, I mean, it's so simple what I just described. That simple thing created my reach and now People know that I'm a health and fitness coach. I don't um, have trouble getting new clients. People often come to me, and it's just so simple. I mean, I it's just so simple. So if I can do it, literally anyone can do it, and I'm gonna show you kind of some tricks and tips how. So I wanna just start with this slide because on the way home from the Beachbody Success Club cruise in the airport, all of these, well, not the one on the left, but the, the two magazines in the middle and on the right, these covers were in the airport, and I saw them, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. It just shows you that, you know, social media is a real thing. This is a, this is a real way that people are growing their businesses and their reach, and it's not just for kids. 
anymore. And it's not just for narcissists, which um, as I said on Super Saturday, my dad used to say, you know, Facebook's just for narcissists. Um, and now he's on it. And maybe that is what it started as, but now it is a, a solid business tool. So we need to treat it that way by doing some training in it. Okay, so I encourage you to jump in now to keep up. If you're not really active in it now, um, it's gonna keep kind of getting ahead of you because it changes almost daily, it feels like. So just get in now so that you can kind of get used to it and go with the changes rather than fight, you know, fighting it. Um, a little training in, the, in these areas can go a long way. I just, um, somebody was just asking me about how to use Pinterest um, for their business, and I found a YouTube video that was fantastic. It was only, it's only 15 minutes long. So in 15 minutes, you can really feel a lot more comfortable with it. Now, of course, then you have to apply what you learn in the videos or in the training to to real life you have to apply it but the, the actual training is really relatively fast but i promise you that if you use social media effectively if you can figure out how to use it effectively it absolutely will grow your business and most of this is free which is amazing okay so this is what i'm going to cover four tips be unique be thoughtful it's your online journal and post frequently so these are the things that I've done and I've learned how to do, and these have worked for me. So the first one, be unique. This is key, I think, and it's something that I'm, I have the most fun doing and I'm most proud of with my personal brand. It's just finding little tweaks in something that everybody's doing to make a, a big difference, just tiny little differences. Um, I try to like buck the trends, even even things like, um, you know, I don't know if you guys remember this, but when a few years ago it started where people would start making collages like for their children's birthdays, that was like kind of, that's kind of a recent thing. And it was really cool at first, and then everybody did it for every birthday. And so it's like every kid's birthday gets a collage. Now, I'm, I mean, I'm a mother and I love looking at collages. I, I love seeing them, I love making them. But as a business person, I think, okay, that is everywhere. So like, what can I do that's just a little different? So for my recent um, daughter's birthday, I think I just put like one picture up just because I wanted it to be different. Okay, that's just a really small example, but I'm thinking that way about every kind of post. So right now, if like think of a typical post that you see. Um, you know, I, I see a lot now about asking people's um, opinions about, um, oh, I can't even think of it, vacations or, you know, even things, things like that. That's kind of gotten really popular, so I try to not do that anymore. I'm just always trying to look for just a little bit, just to be a little bit different. Always ask yourself, how can I make this different from what I've seen? So here's an example. Melissa Rolfs is a coach on Team Transformers, and she posted this picture. She's in front of the three-day refresh. And, you know, I, everybody has a picture of this. I do. I'm holding the three-day refresh. I'm smiling. It's very boring. <laughs> but I love this because she's got a funny look on her face, which made me stop. I'm like, why does she look annoyed? So I, I stop, and then her words, you know, it's official. So I think to myself, what's official? Well, I'm going to read it. So then her copy starts out with addictive personality. Have you heard that term before? And it just pulls you in because I, I don't know about you, but I wanted to know what she's talking about. What, what is she addicted to? What's official, and why is she annoyed? So it was just a slight difference, you know. It was if, if she would have been smiling in this picture, and that um, those words would have said three day refresh, I wouldn't have stopped at all. But because she just made those slight changes, it's more interesting. Okay, here's another one. Amy Probst is a Central Illinois coach, and I love this picture of her shake. And what's different about it? Well, what I noticed is the picture doesn't have a lid, there are nuts on the top. She's got yellow words on the picture, which kind of stand out, and then she's not showing the words on her cup. 
So I know those sound really small, but most of the shake pictures I see, somebody's holding up a cup, you see the words, the lids on the top. So this is just different. It stands out because it's unique. And it is challenging to come up with a different way to show your shake. So, you know, one of one that I took that got a lot of likes, I'm holding my cup and I'm kissing it. And, and um, I mean, people had funny things to say, but it didn't matter because that boosted its engagement. So just kind of always be thinking about, have I seen this before a bunch? And if so, okay, I don't want to do that. What can I do a little bit different? Okay, so we're not going to really do this now, but I, I want to show you this activity that we did um, <clears throat> at Super Saturday. And you can just be thinking about it. So Country Heat is the latest Beachbody program coming out in July. It will be released during Summit this summer. And um, what you're going to see during that release week is this image all over your newsfeed. All sorts of coaches are, are going to be posting this or some sort of beach body images. And it's a great image, but if you see it over and over and over, it loses its touch and it becomes white noise. So your followers, your network start just scrolling. They don't stop on pictures like this if they're seeing it over and over and over. So your goal is to make them stop their scroll and give them something to stop on. So the activity I gave at Super Saturday was, how are you going to promote this program? Think about how most people will promote it, and then think of something a little different. So we had several really great examples. We had um, we had people talking about their boots, you know, holding up their their uh, cowboy boots. We had somebody talking about uh, confessing that she's really um, has like anxiety. She loves to dance, but she has anxiety about um, about doing it in public. So this might be something she can dance in her own home. Um, so there were just a few different ideas. And, you know, another idea is just not to promote it during that time. Maybe you don't want to start talking about it until September. That's another way to just be a little bit different. Or start talking about it now before people really start talking about it. So does that make sense? Okay. All right. So number two, uh, tip number two is to be thoughtful. I love this little graphic, and it just talks about how our job is to balance, you know, we have to balance a, a plan, a business plan, and spontaneity on social media. And, and that's challenging. So we want our posts to look spontaneous, but really to be effective, they need to be planned out a little bit. So being thoughtful just means that you're thinking about what you're putting out there. You're, you're recognizing that social media is like um, one of your employees or a department in your organization. Social media needs your attention and it needs your time and you have to be thoughtful about how you're going to use it. So to just throw stuff out there on, on Facebook or Instagram or whatever you're using and hope it sticks is really not a very effective marketing um, strategy. You need to kind of figure out why you're putting stuff out there, but you don't want to be too predictable. So I know some coaches that put the same stuff out every single day, same workout selfie, same shake picture, same recipes, you know, same recipe, not re exact recipe, but same recipe looking picture. Um, so make sure that you're keeping your audience interested in what you have to say by being interesting and take it seriously. It's your social, it's your marketing department, like I said. So here's some examples. This is Janelle Summers. She uh, has the top earning team in all of Beachbody. Um, she's Shalene Johnson's sister, too, which gives her a nice uh, little leg up, you might say. Uh, and then, but I do, I do really think she's a, a brilliant businesswoman, even though she's got the assist from Shalene. Um, Janelle is a great marketer. So I follow her on Instagram. And she does a lot of pictures like this, where they're, they're workout pictures, they're staged. I mean, you can tell that she set up her camera and she made this move so that she could take a good picture. She's wearing a cute outfit. I like the rope in the corner. And then she always puts some text on her pictures. That's her style. That's her brand. And then whatever she talks about in her text there, she refers to over here, oops, over here in her copy. 
And, um, you know, it's just, it's thoughtful. It's much easier to go to your bathroom mirror and flex and say, I got my workout in, did you? But that's not very thoughtful. So I just think this is a good example. Now, I'm not saying that every picture needs to look like that. In fact, people like to be able to relate to us, right? So we don't need to stage every picture like that. But we do need to be thoughtful about everything we put up so that there is a purpose for it. I always ask myself when I post, is this interesting, funny, entertaining, helpful, um, inspirational? If it's not one of those, then I try not to post it. Now, my time hop will show me all sorts of um, posts that were not any of those. <laughs> like, I'm making dinner. That is nothing. That is just fluff. It's unnecessary. It's like when you write a paper and then you go edit and you take out all the unnecessary sentences. It's the same thing. So you just want everything you put out to be valuable and concise and powerful so that people listen to you. Okay, next. Here's another one from a girl on our team. Uh, not our team, sorry, Central Illinois. So she, at the end of last year, every coach got a report that told you how many people you helped, how many people were on Shakeology Auto Ship, um, how many people stayed on it, that kind of thing. It's called the 365 report or the year-end review or something like that. Anyway, she took a picture of it from her phone, and you see at the bottom it says, you helped 133 people. And then she, her copy said, I would call that a successful 2015. And then she put some other stuff. But I thought it was really brilliant, and it was well thought out. It showed that it showed that what you know why she's a coach that she likes helping people it showed that she's effective at it that she's a good coach because look how many people she helped it was a nice pat on the back and it was just really easy you know it was an easy plug okay and then we did this at super saturday we we came up with alternate terms for some of these things like shakeology Coach, Beachbody, 21 Day Fix, and Challenge Group. And the reason we did that is because sometimes when we're posting about these things frequently, we can become white noise by using the same words over and over. So just like you need to think about everything you put out there, think about the words you're using. Are you using too many words? Is it too long-winded? Um, are you using the words Beachbody and Shakeology all the time so people stop kind of listening to those things? Kind of twist it. You want you want people to hear what you have to say and not get turned off by those kinds of you know salesy type words. Uh, I like to call myself a coach. I, I try not to use Beachbody very often, just so that people keep listening. Um, because unfortunately, they tend to turn you off if you are throwing out words like Beachbody. Shakeology too. I I try not to use it in every post where I talk about Shakeology. Sometimes I just call it my shake or you know my breakfast or whatever. Okay, number three. So to be the most effective at social media, it really needs to be like your online journal. Because this, you know, I love that quote, vulnerability is the only bridge to build connection. This, you're not selling Shakeology and you're not selling workout programs, really, honestly, because people can go buy those without you. You are selling yourself as their coach and their friend and their mentor and you're going to help them. So you're selling you. You, you are going to attract people who like your vibe, who like your personality and your spirit and your background and your, you know, your interests. You're going to attract those people, and that's what they will start following you for. Quite often, people won't start following you for fitness. They'll start following you because they like you. So be likable. Share you. You know, share. Just, just like I'm not only a mother and I'm not only a wife. I have a lot of other dimensions to my personality. You do too. And we, we would be short selling ourselves if we only presented ourselves as a coach or as someone into fitness and health. Because that's really not all we are. We have a lot of other things. One thing that I love, Jameson, that you do, and I don't, maybe this, maybe not everybody feels this way, but I love it. Jameson is a beer connoisseur, like loves all types of beers. And I just freaking think it's amazing that this health coach is talking about 
being a beer connoisseur. I think it's awesome. I think it shows that you can have a life balance. You know, you can be into health and fitness and you can still like beer. And I just, I, I love it. I think it's unique. You know, he's not saying drink beer every day and drink tons of beer all the time. And he's got to be a little bit careful with it. But I think that it's a cool twist on what we do. One thing that I've made really public is that I love donuts. I mean, I just do. Like, they're just part of my life. We get them, I don't know, a few times a month as a family, and I just like love it. I'm so excited about it. I don't eat donuts like crazy, but that is like, I, I would be sad if I couldn't have donut once in a while. And so I talk about that. That's just part of our family life. You know, I, I, I think those kinds of things make us relatable and, and people want relatable. They don't want perfect. Perfect is so boring. So just be you and be unapologetically you and people will love that. Um, you know, while you're being you, you can showcase how health and fitness plays a role in your life. You know, show that it's that strand that you're always coming back to. Show how it works for you, but show the other things too. Okay, so I love uh, Ronnie. She's on our team, <clears throat> on the Transformers team. She does a great job of just sharing her life and fitting health and fitness into it. And this post is so funny. But the part here where she talks about insanity, oops, sorry. Um, turns out that 45 minutes of insanity won't kill me. Uh, it's, you know, she was literally going to teach insanity class, so she just talked about it. And she threw in some funny things in there, so it was entertaining. It was entertaining. So people read it, and then they happened to get a little bit of uh, her health and fitness in there too. So it was that's a really great post. Love it. And then Alex, she's a coach on our team, uh, Dream Builders. She lives in a tiny home, one of those homes built on a trailer. Like they just built this recently. She, you know that home or that show, uh, like Tiny Homes? She lives in a tiny home. And she has figured out a way to work out in this tiny, tiny space. So when she posts about her tiny home, she can also post about her working out in it and how she's able to do it. And she's not selling anything here. She's just sharing her life and her lifestyle. And it's interesting because it's not just about fitness. It's about her lifestyle. It makes it so much more interesting, doesn't it? Okay, so here are some ideas for posts. I can, I can post this in the group, but these are just some ideas because I know Posting three to five times a day, if you're not posting at all, can be overwhelming. And it's kind of like, what do, what do I have to post about? I'm not that interesting. I know people feel that way. So here are just some things to get you started. I like to just think of it like my journal, you know? I, I, what, what do I feel like talking about today? What's going on in my mind? What's motivating me or inspiring me or making me struggle? What am I struggling with? People love, love, love. To hear our struggles you know so what what is what is going on in your brain that's what you're going to share with people okay and then the last one is post frequently so it's um, this is from a book called jab 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 right hook I haven't read it yet but it's on my next list it's not on audio so I have to buy the physical book and I'm lazy about that but the, the idea is that you know you're gonna jab with parts of your life, you know, just here's a, here's a recipe, here's what I'm thinking about, here's what we're doing, and then it's boom, call to action, or boom, invite. So it's just really subtle. It's just like weaved into what you're doing. You know, it's not, if you're constantly doing those right hooks, then they lose their effectiveness, right? But if you just throw them in every once in a while, they catch people off guard, they are seamless, it fits right in, you don't even really notice it. If you're, if you're just giving those jabs all the time. Okay, three to five times per day should be your minimum. And um, one more thing about being posting frequently, especially while you're building your brand. I've been able to pull back a little bit, but um, now that my brand is pretty solid, but I still, I still can't pull back for too long because people are, are looking to you after, you, after you kind of cement your brand, people are looking to you for certain things. You know, I think people look to me for a little humor about maybe motherhood or life, and um, they look for those posts. So when I'm not there, 
then they go somewhere else for that. So you want to just remember that your network is coming to you. They are looking for your post. They like your post. They're interacting with them. So if you only post once and then don't post again for three days, then, you know, it's not very consistent. Think of your business like a store that's open and open. You know, I was I gave the example of Hobby Lobby on Super Saturday that Hobby Lobby is always closed on Sundays, which is great for their families. I'm not knocking that, but that every time I need to go to Hobby Lobby, it's Sunday. And so I always have to go to Michael's and I don't want to go to Michael's. I want to go to Hobby Lobby, but it's just a good reminder um, that that we need to kind of be there. Not all day long, not, you know, constant, but for me, it's been helpful to identify some key times of the day that I post. So I always try to post by 8 a.m. I always try to post around lunch hour, and I always try to post, I do one in the late afternoon and then usually one in the evening. That works for me and my network. That's when my people are online. But you'll, you'll have to find when your people are online and just kind of be consistent. Consistency is key. So, <laughs> this, I forgot I did this. These are some examples of my posts that are bad. These are from, this is one, the Summer Kickoff Challenge. This was my very first invite to an accountability group. And I asked everybody at Super Saturday, how could it be better? And you can probably see, like, who are those people? It's just a stock photo. So, you know, a picture of me or a picture of somebody, a real person, could have been better. Um, it's just a little salesy. And then this one over here, I spent a lot of time putting this together, and, it, you know, it's just not very effective. There's too much going on here. Um, I don't think the Shakeology needs to be pictured. I, it's just not very, it's just not very, you know, effective. What would be more effective is just, like I said, one picture of your face of, you know, something that is important that, that symbolizes fitness could be, but these ads, not super effective. So I just wanted to show, show kind of where I, where I started. Okay. So I think that's the end of that. So what questions do you guys have? I'll, I'll share if I can figure it out. Stop share. Do you guys have any questions? If you do, you can just unmute or use the chat tool. Katie, I'll ask you a question. Okay. So um, you put something out and are you reaching out to everyone that likes your post? Like that's, a, that's a good question. So um, at first, yeah, for sure. And I, I know that's hard, but you just start by saying, thanks so much for your support. It was really hard for me to put that out. And I, <coughs> it's scary starting this new venture. So I really appreciate your support. And that's all you have to do. You know, I, I don't reach out to everybody now because a lot of the people that like my stuff are coaches um, or current clients, you know. But, but yes, especially for you, Leslie, now that people are starting, you're, you're kind of starting to lay the groundwork. Um, yeah, I think so. How's that going? Slow. Yeah. Love it, sure. Yeah. It takes, it takes a little time, for sure. Okay, Laurel. Um, if you have a post that's pretty active with a lot of people commenting, do you post again? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, that's a really good question. I, I wish I would have covered this on Super Saturday. So, no. If I, I purposely save my big posts for really high traffic times. So, for me, it's like before 8 a.m. does the best and then after 7 or 8 p.m. at night. Um, and I, I let those go as long as they're doing really well. If, if I post something on top of it, it'll bump that post down and I want as many people to see it. Yeah. Um, don't post your big post during a non-high traffic time. I saw that today. I, I don't even remember what it was, but it was somebody posted like an invite to a challenge group or an invite to something, and it was not during a high traffic time, 
And, and so then what happens is not a lot of people see it, not a lot of people comment, and then it goes down in the news feed. The faster people like, the faster people comment, the, the longer it stays up or live. Yeah, good question. Oh, you had another one, or maybe that was the rest of it. Okay. So Jameson, I'm gonna call on you for a second um, for your benefit a little bit, Leslie. So Jameson just posted, did you see it? His um, transformation picture on Tuesday. And it went nuts. Like, I've never seen that. It, I mean, the picture's amazing. You have to, you have to submit it to Beachbody, Jameson, to win the 500. I mean, I know that you would win. They have a winner every day, I think. So you could definitely win. But anyway, I think he had like 350 likes or something by the end. It was it's nuts. 500 now. 500? Yeah, it's close. Oh. Yeah. oh my God. Okay. So that to me showed me a few things. Number one, Jameson hadn't shared enough of his transformation up until this point. Because I, I think so many people didn't know about that. Because you made that post public. And it wasn't public at first, so I think that was huge. You can select on your post if, they're, if they just go to your friends or if they're public. And my entire profile is public because I like to reach as many people as I can. If that makes you nervous, you can just select per post. But I'm telling you guys that if you make it public, your reach just goes so much further because friends of friends see your stuff. But anyway, um, Jameson is going to have a, a lot of contacts for a really long time because he's just going to kind of keep working through that list. And probably a lot of them either are already clients or are coaches, but he's just, he's got a great list. Those transformation pictures are huge. Laurel, I know you had a really, you've got, your picture is amazing too. And you should also submit to Beachbody because her picture is in the same dress. And it's like, it just, she looks like two different people. It's amazing. But I bet the first time you posted, didn't it go crazy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and how long were you able to like work from those likes and comments? Um, well, that was like the first time I was really doing a group and everything. So I got my like list of 100 from that post. Wow. Wow. That, that was helpful. <laughs> yes. And it's so scary. It's really scary to put that stuff out. I, when I started, I kid you guys not, this is, so my husband was in China for 10 days on this business trip. And I had a five month old and a 13 month old and a three and a half year old. And I was going like nuts. Like I was just so tired and he was gone. And I became a coach while he was gone. And I think it was probably like my brain was all nutty and I was just like, I'm going to do it. So I signed up and I became a coach and <clears throat> I posted my first um, ad for my challenge group one night when he was gone, like right after I became a coach. And it was kind of like this, like I typed it and then I was like, Ugh. and I walked away and I, it's so scary. And then I, you know, like logged back in and looked at it. And sure enough, I had a bunch of likes. I had messages coming in like ding 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 like I I don't know I probably got like 10 messages I ended up having seven people in that group a lot of them are my family but uh it it is scary and now it isn't and I mean it's not because of anything other than just practice you know um now there are still some things I put out that I'm like oh that was kind of bold we'll see what happens with that and it's still scary but I promise that it, it gets easier and um, just know that we've all been there and it's, it's, it's a vulnerable place. Being a coach is not hard. You know, it's really simple. What we're doing is very simple and it's duplicatable, but it puts you in a vulnerable position and that's what makes it great because we, we have to kind of be behind what we're doing as coaches. You know, Lindy has said this before and I'll end here. She said, you know, when you sell makeup or candles or, you know, skincare, not that those companies aren't great. I mean, I, I love many of those companies. But when you're selling that, it's, it's a little bit on the surface. You know, you, you don't have to be 
a product of the product or you don't, you know, you're, you don't have to put yourself into it as much. It's more on the surface. When you're in the health and fitness, you're kind of saying, I'm trying to be better at health and fitness, or I'm trying to lead a healthy and fit life, and I want you to do it with me. It's much more vulnerable. I don't, my words are not as good as Lindy's, but I hope you get my point that it's just, it, it is, it is um, humbling oftentimes to put yourself out there like that for sure. But every time you do it, you grow a little more as a person. And you come out more confident. I think that's why this business provides so much confidence because you're just, you're constantly putting yourself out there, you know? Okay. I'll stop rambling. Are there any other questions that you guys have? I'll just make a comment if I could about the um, handbag and makeup thing. Yes. I think it's like, it's like, you don't have a relationship with a handbag. You don't have a relationship with makeup. If you don't like it, you throw it away. And you don't order from them anymore. But it's like we have to make that relationship with our clients. And hopefully, you know, they're not going to throw us away. Like, you know, once they're bonded to us, they're not going anywhere. And they want to be a part of our life. We want to be a part of their life. Instead of just, oh, I'm, you know, I don't like this mascara anymore. Done, you know. Totally. So it's like, it's like you don't get that, um connection with an inanimate object like you get with a person. <laughs> That's totally true because you're right. We're not really selling products at all. We're helping, we're connecting them to products, but we're selling ourselves and our, our help and that you're right. That's much more vulnerable. Awesome. You guys, she, um, Leanne is a coach in the business boot camp. She's one of Lindy's coaches. So she's not on our team, but I invited everybody in the boot camp to be on if they wanted to be on this call. Okay. Thank you guys so much. And um, please, you know, if you have questions, I'll post the recording. Feel free to post underneath there. And thanks for being on. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye.